Hello, everyone. Hello, and happy almost Thanksgiving. We are answering Thanksgiving questions today. Um, next week is Thanksgiving here in the United States. And so we get lots and lots and lots and lots of questions about our roast turkey recipe, which is the very best turkey you will ever eat in your entire life. I guarantee it. I can testify to that. And every person that has ever made it has said, I'm never making it any other way again because it's so easy. Two ingredients, literally five minutes of prep. I mean, as long as it takes you to open the pack, the turkey, set it in the pan and put a stick of butter in it, you're done. And so, yeah. So for those of you wondering, our up daily yearly planner so they're daily planner but it's a year's worth of days in here so this is almost 400 pages is available right now for sale guys we expect to get them around december 10th it could be sooner than that which i'll explain in just a moment but um december 10th is the day we're telling everybody but they are for sale now for everyone who was asking they are for sale now and Dining on a Dime Cookbook, 25% off right now. We are talking about our roast turkey recipe right there on page boop, doo -doo, doo -doo, 240. Right there it is. That's what we are talking about because we get tons of questions about our roast turkey recipe. All right, guys, we are answering your Thanksgiving and cooking questions today. So please put them in the comments, write the word question in caps, and then um, Mike can find those easier. Um, okay, I gotta get myself set up here. I apologize, running late. I was trying to clean up. So a few people asking about where's Jill? All right, so where's Jill? So mom fell and hurt her tailbone almost three weeks now ago. And she is not able to sit. <laughs> That's kind of a predicament to have. And so it's, it's been a problem. Also, my grandmother had what we believe is a stroke yesterday. And um, so we're having to deal with that. So she couldn't be on because it, she's waiting on phone calls from my uncle to see what's happening with grandma. And so it's just been loads of fun around here lately. <laughs> We've been having all kinds of stuff happening. So <clears throat> that means we've been talking about Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, let's get to the number one Thanksgiving question we get every year. Dining on a Dime Cookbook, 25% off right now, page 240. Now, first of all, let me say, there is a typo in the book, and it is not page 250. It's page 240 in the index. Very sorry about that. Just noticed it. So the number one question we always get is, do you really cook your turkey at 200 degrees? And the answer is a resounding... Uh, yes. <laughs> no, it's supposed to be resounding, honey. I know, that's why Make it sound... <laughs> yes! <laughs> there you go. Okay. So literally, 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 all you do is you take your turkey, you open the package, take out the neck, take out the giblets, put those in a pan with some water to start boiling for your gravy. Then you take your turkey, you do not wash it. Do not wash your turkey. Do not wash it. Why? Because even the CDC agrees, and I know no, I know that a majority of Americans do not have any faith in the CDC anymore. I totally get that. But supposedly they have also done the research that you do not want to be washing any poultry anymore. Why? Because all you're doing is you're splatting bacteria-laden turkey and chicken juices all over your kitchen when you do that. You may think you're not splatting everywhere, but you are splatting everywhere. I guarantee it. It's going all over the cupboards, all over the dishes sitting on the countertops. It's going all over the backsplashes, 
all over the faucet, all over the soap dispenser, soap bottles, whatever you have. You have bacteria laden, poultry juice all over everything when you wash it. So stop washing it. Yummy. <laughs> All right, that's tip number one. Tip number two is just take it out of, the per out of the package, let it drain. I have a video coming out on Friday on how to do all this, but um, then all you do is you set it in the pan, breast side down. So the little puppy thing, the little puppy thing, that's the breast, so you turn it upside down. Then you take one stick of butter, if you're dairy free, one cup of, or a half a cup of ghee or margarine, butter's the best or ghee's the best, but if you don't have that, you can use margarine and put it inside the cavity of the bird, which is where the legs are tied. So where the legs are tied, shove a stick of butter in there, okay? I know it seems a little indelicate, but sometimes you just gotta do those things. <laughs> <clears throat> any woman who's had a baby knows the feeling. Can I get an amen, sister? Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a family All show. All right. I guess that would be a family, it? How do you think we got a family, dear? <laughs> um, <clears throat> now, do I need to tell you how this is done? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> then you're going to take and you're going to put your turkey in the oven for 250 degrees. And then you are going to let it cook for one hour and then you're going to reduce it to 200 degrees and you're going to let it cook for 10 to 14 hours. Now people freak out about this recipe all the time. Do not freak out about it. I guarantee you your turkey will get hot enough to kill any bacteria. Now also you do not want to stuff your turkey. You should never be stuffing your turkey. Why? Because the inside does not get hot enough to kill the bacteria laced turkey juices and kill all that bacteria in there. So stop stuffing your turkey also, okay? Now next, um, Really, it's 10 to 14 hours. So let's say you're eating at noon. I would put your turkey in the night before you go to bed. Let it cook all night. You should be smelling it in the morning. If it's not, if you're not smelling it in the morning, it's not done. Do not panic. Just let it continue to cook until noon and it will get done. If it's done in the morning and you'll know because you will pull the meat will literally fall off the bones. The meat will fall off the bones, okay? So you will know it's done because you'll take a fork and you will be able to just pull a piece of meat off with a fork. You should never, ever, 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 ever have to use a knife to carve a turkey. Ever. Have you ever seen me using a knife on Thanksgiving? Nope. Never. I have never used a knife. The meat should be so tender and so moist, it literally falls off the bones. And I forgot to get the picture, but one year, the my pan was too small and the juices overflowed. And when I went to pull it out of the oven, it slipped out of my hands and flopped on the floor and the whole thing just fell apart. I emailed that picture to you today. Did you get it? No. Did you? <laughs> Um, um, we should have put it on the show. Shoot. Why didn't well, oh, it's here a vertical it is. version, but still. Um, whoops. I don't have it, I guess. Uh, well, you just keep going and I'll look for it. Yeah. Okay. You didn't get, I didn't get it. Okay. And, um, so it's that tender and that juicy that it should just literally fall off the bones. Now, if you're eating in the afternoon or evening, Put your turkey in as soon as you get up in the morning. Here, Mike will show the wonderful, oh, yummy scary. goodness here. Uh, <laughs> Thanksgiving, what was this, like 2013 or something. And, I mean, it just literally falls off the bones. Guys, give me a testimony in the comments if it falls off the bones. Because I know all of our viewers totally agree. Oh. That this is the best turkey ever. 
Okay, Mike's about to get it in. Okay, oh. here is. I wasn't prepared. I didn't know we were doing this. Okay, there we go. Here is the turkey that literally fell off the bones. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. actually, Grandma, um, the one who uh, had, we the think, we think had the stroke yesterday, but she uh, she's been on she's been in the background on some of the videos. And the day that we shot this. For the day that this happened, she just could not stop laughing. <laughs> it's, it's funny because she doesn't get that like high strung about anything, but she just busted a gun laughing on that one. It was pretty funny. So maybe we need to have Uncle Jack give her that picture tomorrow to help her remember that. Um, now, here's the thing. If your turkey is not done, do not panic. You can just turn it up to 350 degrees for one or two hours and it will finish cooking and then turn it back down until it's time for dinner, okay? But let's say you cook your turkey all night long and it's done in the morning. Then just leave it in the oven cover covered and just put your oven on warm. It's usually 150 to 175 degrees. So just leave it on warm. It's perfectly fine. Nothing's gonna happen, okay? Yes, we did eat that turkey. We scraped everything off the top and we ate that turkey. Um, <laughs> now, if you wake up in the morning and you put your turkey in, your turkey should be done by like five to six o'clock at night in the evening. All right. If that's not, that's not the 10 to 14, 15 hours that it normally is, but usually mine gets done. If it's a bigger turkey, like 20 pounds, just Put it at 350 degrees for one or two hours to get that temperature up and get it going and then turn it down to 200 and you're cooking with gas, okay? Now, I know this is a lot of instructions and I know it seems complicated, but guys, let me tell you, this is super easy. People make it way more complicated than they need to. You really don't need to make it complicated. Literally shove the butter in, turn the turkey upside down on its breast, and then cover it with foil, seal it really good with foil, shove it in the oven, cook it at 200 degrees, and you're good. It's, it's really the only way to make turkey. So then after, when you're ready to eat, all those juices in the turkey, you can um, pour them in a pot, and there is your gravy base. And all you do is take some cornstarch, put it in a bowl with some cool water, stir it up, put it in with your gravy, season it with a little extra salt if you want to, and let it come to a boil and thicken, and you have your turkey and gravy, and it's really the best you will ever eat. It really is. Now, for those of you who just cannot live without the crispy uh, turkey skin, you can use the recipe on page 253 if you want. You can use the recipe on page 253 for the roast sticky chicken or turkey. Now, that is adds a spicy coating to the turkey uh, skin if you want. Or if you just want the skin, just follow the directions on the roast sticky turkey and just sprinkle the top of the turkey with some salt and pepper, and then probably three hours before dinner, just take some of those turkey juices and put it on top. Don't cover it with foil, and just take some of those turkey juices and pour it on top every 30 minutes or so, and you will have a delicious, crispy, skinned turkey. Okay. Had a lot of questions uh, about the turkey. All right. I'll, some, I'll start bringing them on. I was trying to reorganize them in turkey order since you're already talking about the turkey. But anyway, here's kind All of All right. When I still cook my turkey like that, do I still cook the bones to make broth? Later you can, yes. You don't need it for your turkey gravy for Thanksgiving dinner because there will be so much broth in the bottom of the pan. Just use that to make your gravy. Then what mom does, and I do too, but what we do is, it's mom's idea, is we uh, just take the foil that the turkey was roasted in, plop the bones on there, wrap it up, and throw it in the freezer for later if we don't feel like making the broth right away. 
I usually make it right away just because I like it. But if you um, want to wait till later, then you can just throw all those bones in the freezer. And like a 20 pound turkey, I would divide the bones into three because that's a lot of broth. And the recipe for broth is in Dining on a Dime Cookbook Volume 2 also. You can get it 25% off right now. For those of you just joining us while Mike's getting me the questions, go ahead and email them to me. Our daily yearly planner. So it's a daily planner that's one year long. We have them now, guys, for sale. Everybody's been begging and begging, begging. We are not having a 2023 version. We're not, we're only doing undated planners from now on. If you want a planner, go order it right now. I only have 300 to start and I've already sold not quite half, not quite half, about a third. I've already sold a third of them, but um, so if we have to go to Colorado to be with grandma, uh, for those of you who missed my grandma had a stroke, we were pretty sure she had a stroke. Um, if we go to Colorado later this week, next week to see grandma, mom and I, I may be able to pick some up next week. So just letting you guys know, um, I may have to drive mom down there because she fell and hurt her tailbone really bad and can't drive. So yeah, this is real interesting. Uh, does it matter if, a, if we have a small turkey, how long do we cook it? It doesn't really matter. The thing is, when you slow roast it like this, this, it is almost impossible to dry it out. But if it's a small turkey, I would cook it like eight hours. Cook it overnight, keep it sealed up, and in the morning, test with the fork test and see if the meat falls off the bones. If it does, put the foil back on and turn your temperature down to 150 to 170 degrees and just keep it warm until dinner. Is the turkey you had in the deep freezer for good still good? If is a turkey you had in the deep freeze for a year still good? Trisha wants to know. Yes, usually it is. I have used them that long where I forgot that they were in there. Yes, usually they are. As a matter of fact, today our dinner is chicken that is probably 15 months old that I got shoved in the back and we're getting that eaten up. Tay Tay, we just did a light broil at the end of the roasting and it got crispy and juicy. Yes, you can just broil the skin at the end, take off the foil, and just a few minutes before dinner, broil the skin. If you like to eat the skin, that is perfectly fine. Do How do you make homemade stuffing? So, Nancy wants to know. Homemade stuffing is on page... Um, Stuffing is uh, stuffing. Oh, 186 to 187. And this is grandma's recipe right here. Now, <laughs> it's two pages long, but don't let that intimidate you. It is not difficult. Okay. It's just that we put notes in there for different adaptations, variations. If you like a drier stuffing, if you like a more moist stuffing, we put all these different things in there. So don't let it intimidate you. That's two pages long. All you do basically is leave your bread out to get really dry. Then tear up the pieces into cubes, put it in a bowl, cook your pork sausage with your onion and get those cooked up. Then just put that with the broth and the butter and margarine and bouillon cube and pour that over your stuffing. Then it will be cool. Take your three eggs and your sage and your salt and pepper and your small bag of croutons and just mix that all in there and then bake it. It's super easy. Um, also, I know there's two pages, but it's just variations and tips. So don't let it do that. So no, do not stuff your turkey. That is actually very dangerous. The internal temperature of the stuffing almost never gets high enough to kill the bacteria in the, in the, um, in the turkey juices. And I know there'll be thousands of people who tell me, I have been stuffing my turkey since 1928 and I've never gotten sick. I know that's fine. I'm just telling you 
normal food safety protocol. Okay. And the, the amount of time it would probably need to cook to be sure would totally dry out and incinerate the outside probably. of the turkey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And guys, the turkey, the stuffing that we make from Dining and Dining Cookbook, 25% off right now. The stuffing that we make in the side, on the side, in the dish is really good. I don't like sausage. So normally I don't eat stuffing, but I really like this particular stuffing. Speaking of which, I need to make sure we have sage for stuffing. If Well, if we have Thanksgiving this year. So now we're not even sure what we're doing for Thanksgiving. So anyway, um... Since no one, Barbara says, since no one will eat sausage in their stuffing, but will eat a little bacon in it, how much bacon should I add to the stuffing? <laughs> you can never add too much bacon. Oh my goodness. That would be an interesting flavor <laughs> to have bacon stuffing. I think it would be good. Yeah, it would probably be good. But just different. I would say, I don't know, five or six pieces crumbled up. You could also, if you don't want to spend the money on bacon and you have bacon grease, you could just use bacon grease also. Send me the next load. Um, Wanda, I live alone. So how much would I cook the turkey if I have the butcher cut it in half, just like a roast chicken? So for me, when I do a chicken, I um, just put it in the oven in the morning and let it cook all day until I eat in the evening. So that's how I would do it. Oh, oops, I didn't scroll down. Wow, we got a lot of questions today, don't we? Oh, so you didn't get through Connie, sorry. I've always put mine at 350 for an hour and then turned down to 250 overnight. I turn it up at 350 for about an hour before I take it out of the oven. Mom always did it like this and it works great for me. Yeah, I mean, that would be fine. This really is not rocket science, guys. The only way you could screw this up is if you're like me and you have an oven that turns off after 10 hours. Ask me how I know. Now, the only thing is it turned off, but my turkey was still hot. So I just turned my, my oven back on and finished cooking my turkey then. So don't freak out if that happens either. How long would you kick, cook a chicken or two this way with half a stick of butter in each? Otherwise the same, simply joyful? Yes. Like I said, I put it in the oven in the morning and cook it until uh, that night. It would be fine. My daughter bought a basically 20 pound butterball turkey and paid $38 and whatever cents for it. $1.99 a pound. Wow. That's really expensive since everybody's telling me they're getting them for 39 cents, 49 cents, 59 cents, 69 cents. Here in our town, 89 cents looks like it's going to be the closest, but that's super expensive because really they're cheap. I have... Friday's video that's coming out is on how to feed your family for $20 for 12 mil meals. $20 for 12 meals. You guys, I know there's inflation and all this hoo-ha, but you can still, my grocery bill has not gone up at all. So anyway. Uh, in addition to the book links, I've also been sharing the traditional Thanksgiving recipes. I just shared that again. It's a post that has all kinds of things, including the stuffing yep. and some of the other stuff. All these recipes are in that in that um, website post. Yep. Uh, Sonia, our local, I have ruler, I have no idea what that is, had turkey in the, cur in the current ad for 67 cents a pound with a limit of one per customer because the turkey is very limited stock locally. Yeah, so then, um, yeah, I mean, I would get as many as you can and fill up your freezer, but that's a great deal. Barbara, since my daughter also bought two boxes of Mrs. Kubitson's stuffing and since no one will eat it with sausage in, oh, how, okay, same question. Uh, Wow, I didn't think I could do that. My butterball was free this year. They were 97 cents a pound without the promotion. 99 cents a pound without, the, yeah. I mean, that's a really good deal. Uh, my friend Kimmy over at She's in Her Apron, she just did her last video, I think, was free turkey. Go watch it, guys, because she got a free one too. Brenda says she just got a free one with a $100 purchase of Kroger. Yeah, so if we go down to Colorado for Grandma, then... Um, I'm going to check Kroger down there. I'm probably going to come back with a car full of groceries because <laughs> Kroger down there is so much better than our grocery stores up here. I can't wait for our Albertsons to turn to Kroger. 
Uh, Karen said she ordered her volume one and volume two cookbooks for herself for Christmas. That is wonderful. They're 25% off right now, including our gluten-free, dairy-free edition for those of you who are gluten-free and dairy-free. And Michael put the link in there for our gluten-free, dairy-free Thanksgiving recipes. Guys, you won't even know it's gluten-free, dairy-free. It's so delicious. So go check that out. Uh, do you have a link for Kimmy? The, did you talk about a particular video for Kimmy? Yeah, she's on her apron. It's just the last video she did. Um, Tay Tay says, I can't believe it's been a year already since you guys helped me with my turkey dilemma. You guys saved my Thanksgiving. Yay, I'm so glad. Cranberry sauce, make it or buy it. I buy the canned. I have never had homemade cranberry sauce. I should try it. I love cranberries. Maybe I'll try it this year. I don't know. Didn't we buy the can once and mix some like actual cranberries into it? No, it comes with a whole cranberries. Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought we did something mm -hmm. like that yeah. for... <laughs> Kara says our Thanksgiving is going to be much tastier this year because of our amazing tips. Prayers for your mom and grandma. Thank you. Appreciate that. Um, I've been making my turkey this way ever since I found your channel about six years ago. Everyone looks forward to it because it's so moist and flavorful. Yes, people. Thank you, Danny. Um, yes, everyone raves about this turkey and they actually like eating turkey. I never realized people don't like turkey because ours is so moist and so delicious that... Um, that I didn't know there was such a thing as a dry turkey until we saw uh, Christmas Vacation, which I do not rent, which I do not recommend. That is not a family friendly movie, so don't watch it. But <laughs> I never realized until I saw that movie that there was such a thing as a dry turkey. Uh, Diana says she's making soup from leftover turkey broth. Yes, and you can get turkey uh, soup recipe in our dining on a dime cookbook super delicious also monique question will the turkey need any seasoning before putting it in the oven no you use one stick of salted butter oh, and it's delicious it turns out great yeah everybody freaks out because we don't put all these seasonings and all this ridiculous stuff on there no 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 one stick of salted butter is all you need it's just funny because tara literally spends like two minutes Prepping the I turkey, know. sticks it in the oven, and then it's like 12 hours later, or however many yeah. hours later. Uh, I think usually she throws it all in there and then sticks it in the oven overnight. <laughs> we just go to bed and in the morning. It's starting to smell really good already. <laughs> Smells delicious. <laughs> yeah. Christy, is it more simple than having to baste and baste and baste and it's still dry as who knows what? Yeah, you do not baste it. All you do, the foil keeps the moisture in there and it seeps into all that turkey meat and it is so juicy and delicious. And why you turn the turkey breast upside down is because the breast is the part that gets the driest because the white meat dries out more than the dark meat. So with the white meat down, it's got all those juices running into the breast and then your, then your, uh, Dark meat is still nice and moist. She was actually telling somebody else that it is easier than doing all that. Oh, yeah. It's much easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry if I misread it. It wasn't thing. the cool, yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yes, it is much simpler. Sorry if I misread it. Diana, do 10-pound turkeys or half turkeys still cook in 10 hours? Yes. Just still do 8 to 10 hours. I would go closer to 8 probably. But... Like I said, really, it's not rocket science. It's it's not going to dry out your turkey or anything. Could you do it in the crock pot? Yes, you can do it in the crock pot if you want. But I will tell you, the oven does taste better. There is something about roasted food in the oven. It just tastes a thousand times better. Granny Fabulous, I live alone, so I'm making a Cornish hen. That is an excellent idea. Uh, Galena says, as a single mom, I don't cook a big meal. It's just simple dinner of pork chops, sweet potatoes, green beans, and apple cobbler. And that's fine. Really, if you guys saw our skipping Thanksgiving video, people make things way more complicated than they actually need to. If that's what you guys want, go for it. If you want pizza, eat pizza. Don't, not, don't knock yourself out making a huge Thanksgiving dinner if nobody wants that. We've had some years where we just... 
ask the kids, what do you want? Well, and honestly, for probably, we've been married 28 years and I probably only made four, four, maybe five Thanksgiving dinners because I started the cookbook not two, three years after we got married. Oh my goodness, has it been that long? And um, so it got to the point after testing recipes all year long for the website and stuff and the cookbooks that I didn't really want to cook Thanksgiving dinner. So I would buy a tur turkey and put it in the freezer and we would cook it in December or January. I really didn't cook for Thanksgiving. And we would go to the buffet for Thanksgiving. Almost every year we went to a buffet. That way all the boys can get all the pizza they want. All the girls can get the salads or whatever they want. Mom and dad can get whatever we want. And we can just enjoy the food that we want. And that's okay. We don't do that now because we have so many more people in our family and to pay for Thanksgiving dinner for eight to 10 people. I mean, we're talking close to 200 bucks. That's ridiculous. So we're not doing that anymore, but sorry, kids love you, but not that much. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> what do you think of using a cooking bag? That's totally fine. It's the same concept as just making sure the foil it's wrapped in foil it's the same concept just keeping the moisture in yeah. yeah um is the cooking time the same for any size turkey pretty much but um i mean you could cut a couple of hours off if it's a 10 to 15 pound turkey versus a 15 to 20 to 25 pound turkey so yeah i mean i would shorten the cooking time a couple of hours but really it's not going to matter hardly at all uh, Bundy says we used to base with orange juice concentrate. That would be yummy. I might do that. Dave got, go to the community tab and steal that picture that I put on there last night. And I'm going to tell this, the um, tab? that would be really yummy. I bet. Um, let me grab, let me have Mike get a picture here real quick. Keep going. Oh, oh, there it is. Just get a screenshot or however you want to do it and show in just a second here. Mike's going to get a picture because I have something funny to tell you guys talking about. So I might do it with this turkey that we got. Um, does it matter? Okay. Everybody. Oh, wait. No, that's the same question. Um, Tracy, I ordered our planner because there is a chart, chork charts cleaning schedule. Yes. So for those of you wondering... Right here is the chore chart cleaning schedule. And what you do is you just mark it off as you do it. Each month, I've got each month for the chores. Then you're slowly every day doing one cleaning, one deep cleaning or decluttering, and you're not getting overwhelmed. We have them in stock, guys. We expect them around December 10th mm -hmm. to start shipping them. So order them right now if you would like them. There are going to be no 2023 planners. And because these are printed in the United States, we do not have any coupons or sales on them. Um, and thank you, Tracy, for ordering. Uh, and the, when she says no 2023 planners, the thing about the undated ones that's nice is that you can start whenever. all the problem that we've had getting them printed year after year won't be a problem because this will be the same kind of thing that we're printing. Yeah. So, We're going to do different, different covers, but the same insights. So it'll be easier to reliably keep bringing them to you every year. Yep. Uh, Bundy says there in Florida, they fry the bird a lot. Yeah. I hear that's a good way to burn your house down. <laughs> <laughs> I would probably do that. When I was working <laughs> at Washington State University, one of the some of the students were doing it. It was just a new thing and they had bought a trash can and they were doing it. It was like a jet engine of flame going up. Apparently they use their, it matters what kind of oil they use. <laughs> you fry them. It matters. It's dangerous. Annette, I cook a small turkey in my seven quart uh, crock pot overnight and it comes out super juicy. Yep. Did you get that picture ready? Yeah. Okay. So Mike's going to show this. So the back to the orange juice thing. So we, Dave got a free turkey at work yesterday 
and he forgot it. And so his coworker texted him and said, Hey, you forgot your turkey. And Dave's like, Oh man, I can't really go out right now. Cause it had the, I, the roads had literally iced over really bad. And I'm like, yeah, well, you're not going to go wreck the car for a $20, $10 bird. So his friend said, okay. He said, well, I'll put it outside in the snow for you. And you can come pick it up in the morning. And Dave was like, okay. So his friend sent this, sent this picture of a map of where he put the turkey in the it's like snow. X marks the spot. <laughs> oh my goodness. I laughed for an hour. I thought that was the most hilarious thing. Uh, Only in Wyoming. So I was terrified that an animal was going to go get it. So we found out um, his coworker actually lives right by us. So he did bring it to our house for us. But <laughs> I thought that was great. Oh my goodness. I about died laughing. Yeah, we need a good laugh after grandma's. Uh, well, so uh, we got the news that grandma had what basically was a stroke. They didn't know it was a stroke at the time, but they thought that she only had literally hours to live if that long. And so yesterday at two o'clock, mom and I were getting ready to leave to go down to Colorado before the snow comes. Well, then they called and said, well, maybe she's doing better. I don't know. Maybe not. And it's just been touch and go all since yesterday. So when I saw that picture that Dave's friends sent, I was like, oh, that was great. I needed that today. So send me the next uh, batch. Uh, would it be okay to took the turkey your way and then mix it in with the, my stuffing, pour some turkey juice on it, and then foil pan and cook like a casserole? Yes, Sarah, you can do that. That would be great. Uh, Marilyn Monroe says, stuffing is really easy. Don't be scared. Yes. Really, guys, I guarantee you our recipes are super, super easy. People totally underestimate how easy they are. They really do. Tara, will my hand wrapped in foil still be good for Christmas? Yes, Rhonda, it will be. I would put it in the freezer probably. Look at the date on the foil and see what it says, but I would probably put it in the freezer. Today I threw out, I was just disgusted, a six pound, um, So mom just sent a message that says, Uncle Jack, my mom's brother just called and grandma is doing just fine and they can't figure out what happened, but she is all better and the doctor can't believe it. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Yesterday at two o'clock, she had like hours to live. And now today she started acting better and they don't know what's going on and they've done all kinds of tests and everything. So now I don't know. I don't know if we're going down there on Friday. I don't know if grandma's coming up here with the kids for Thanksgiving. She I was, don't know. She was going to come up with the kids. Yeah, she was so. going to come up with my kids. All my kids and their friends are coming up for um, Thanksgiving. And so she was going to ride up with them for Thanksgiving. But now I don't know. Okay. <laughs> Actually, um, I do think that it could have been all the prayer for her for sure. Yes, I'm sure. Uh, Diana, so even if I have a roaster top, do I still cover it with foil? No, if you have a roaster top, you do not need to cover it with foil. Your, um, mom, your mom said she's grandma's still planning to try and come up here. So grandma is still planning on trying well, to come up for Thanksgiving. That's a big change in less than 24 hours. Here we thought we were going to a funeral for Thanksgiving. Mm. <laughs> yeah, grandma's. That's good. We're very glad. Up from the grave she rose. <laughs> We're very much looking forward to seeing her again this Thanksgiving. So, <clears throat> oh, have mercy. Okay, Pedro says, "What establishes the difference in price of pounds of turkeys? Is it the quality? No, it's really not. It's just the manufacturer and a name brand people think is more impressive than a not a name brand, and so they pay more for it. It's the when you put the butter in it, you don't need to pay for a butter ball because you're just adding your own stick of butter for 50 cents instead of paying an extra 10 or $15 for butter ball to do that for you. Debbie, super proud that I was able to buy a turkey for 49 cents, paid 6.89, limit one per person, but that's okay. We'll take my mom to the store tomorrow. Yay, that's great. 
Just Vicky, in our family, it is called dressing. Breads with lots of turkey pieces, onions become a meal on its own as a leftover. We make much extra for leftover. Oh, yeah. You know, and I just put, I'll just take those foil pans and I'll make double, triple of the stuffing or the mashed potatoes. And I'll put the, put a blop of each, the green beans, the stuffing, the mashed potatoes, the turkey for a meal for four, put foil over it, stick it in the freezer. And then when I need a really fast meal, all I do is just take that out and throw it in the oven at 350 for 20 or 30 minutes. And I've got dinner with no mess, nothing. It's great. Rhonda purchased ham in October for Christmas. Will it still be good? Yeah, it should be. Tara for mayor. Ha, huh, thanks. I don't know what brought that on, but thank you. Uh, Sarah, I chop up apple in my stuffing. I bet that would be tasty. Might have to try that sometime. My hair looks amazing. Well, thank you, Christy. Thank you. I got a haircut that I'm not real happy with last week, but thank you. I've been trying to still do something with it. Um, Wanda, I cook uh, stuffing separate from the turkey because it will take longer to cook. Yes. Yep. You're right. Um, thank you guys for all the prayers for mom and grandma. Mom is starting to feel better, but she still doesn't want to, you know, uh, overdo it. So, and have it flare up. Shannon, I had my mother-in-law, my mom, my grandma over for Thanksgiving a little over five years ago. Tara did a live while I was cooking. And had all three of them giving me advice. I asked Tara, she helped me, and all three of them said it was the best turkey. Downfall, I am always in charge of the turkey now. Hey, you know, our church is having a Thanksgiving dinner, and we're not going. But if we were going, I would say I'll bring the turkeys. I'm like, people have no idea how delicious this turkey is. And I would hate to ruin a church Thanksgiving dinner with a dried out turkey. And I'm like, and, and the beauty of this is, if you don't feel like cooking it on Thanksgiving day, let's say you want to cook it the day before or even two days before, put it in a foil pan, take all the meat off, pour some turkey juice over it, the cooked, the cooked broth from the pan, you know, from your turkey over it, seal it with foil, and then you can just put it in the oven and heat it up and nobody will even know the difference. They won't because it's, it's really good and moist. Amazing Grace. Oh, and the turkey is probably the cheapest part of the entire Thanksgiving meal. Shoot, I would do the turkey anytime. So I'm totally with you, Shannon. Amazing Grace, our Kroger here, you have to spend $25 to get the turkey for 49 cents a pound. Well, good grief. You spend $25 just going in and getting milk. So yeah, I think that would be great. Uh, this I got at Hobby Lobby. Isn't that just too stinking cute? I bought it at Hobby Lobby and had Mike give it to me for our anniversary. <laughs> uh, last time we were in Colorado, we don't have a Hobby Lobby here. Um, Sarah, my kids always like the jelly cranberry sauce, but then the style they have, no, oh, then they style it like <clears throat> Devil's Tower. That's hilarious. That's funny. I told Tara, Jonathan. I always thought it was hilarious to cut the top and the bottom off the can and drop it out and just have it stand there in the shape of the can. That's what they do. Yes, that's how they do it for uh, Devil's Tower. Yes, that's pretty funny. Oh, Jonathan, we love you. I got mine today at Winn Dixie for forty nine cents a pound. Good deal. I had string bean casserole, great with sweet potato casserole. Pineapple and pecans. Ooh, sweet potato casserole with pineapple and pecans. Oh, that would be good, buddy. Oh, my goodness. We'd have turkey sandwiches the next day. Oh, yes. I love, I love leftover turkey. Uh, Jonathan says turkey dark meat is the best. I know. It's really good, isn't it? Beverly, our ham is frozen. I'll take it out of the freezer Sunday night, place it in the fridge. It's already cooked. Just need to be warmed, light, homemade glaze, decorated with pineapple and maraschino of cherries. Yeah. And don't forget, guys, use your garage and your back porch if you need or a cooler on the back porch or whatever for extra storage if you live in a colder climate. Excuse me, if you live in a colder climate. Now, people like Jonathan who live in the South can't do that. I totally get it. But if you're like here in Wyoming where we've had snow on the ground for three weeks now <laughs> and I don't think it's going anywhere, you can do that. Wanda, I've cooked the turkey upside down. It's incredibly moist. The best white meat ever. Yes, it definitely is. And 
Karen, Beth says, I like your video on how to use leftover turkey. Thank you. I did that last year with a collab with Six Sisters stuff. Love Kristen over there. Buddy, we had streamy. Oh, wait. Uh, okay. Um, Laura, make sure to use salted butter. Yes, salted butter. If you don't have salted butter, then just sprinkle the inside of your bird with a little bit of salt. It won't hurt anything. Do we have any Thanksgiving traditions now that it is cold? Did your mom get her wood stove installed? So neither mom or us got our wood stoves installed. Kind of wish we would have, but it was going to be like four to $5,000 for them to literally put two holes in and put a stove pipe up for mom. It's like ridiculous. There's no reason for it to be that expensive. And they wanted 10,000 for ours. And we already have the stoves. That's just the installation. It's ridiculous. So if the fecal matter hits the oscillation unit, then we're just going to put them in ourselves. But our insurance doesn't cover at the moment if we do it ourselves. So that's why we haven't done it. Marie, major meatloaf recipe after I received book one and my husband loved it. Yay, meatloaf, volume two, dining on a dime cookbook right there. He's never said that about my meatloaf. <laughs> Can you send me the next one? Next one. Uh, yes. That's uh, hilarious. And well, Mike's giving me the next set of questions, guys. Our very large, almost 400 page daily yearly planner. So yearly daily planner. I don't know how I'm supposed to say that, but it's 366 days right there, undated, but it's a year's worth of organization. We have them on sale right now. We have our old printer in Colorado. We love Copy Co. in Fort Collins. If you guys need a printer, go to Copy Co. <clears throat> in Fort Collins. They're the best. We love Goalie and Free. <laughs> Poor Goalie and Free. The things they do for us are above and beyond the call of duty. <laughs> and, uh, I think I test their Christianly patience. <laughs> <laughs> um. But we do have the planners being printed right now. I'm going to go down next week after Thanksgiving and pick them up if we don't have to go down to get grandma or be with grandma, which it sounded like we may not have to yet. So I don't know what's happening for our Thanksgiving now. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So Adventures, uh, they didn't take you over. They just created an account with your picture and your name and started posting trollish things and... I blocked them, but didn't block you because <laughs> I was able to tell the difference. But it looked to other people like you might have said some stuff, which is why she said that. Uh, Jonathan, I used orange slices in my burger. Yes. So the roast sticky, sticky turkey uses orange or onion slices if you want. And it is really delicious also. It is really super good also. Um, and he uses sliced apples for more moisture as well. Yeah, that's a good idea. Karen, I use an electric roaster this year. I'll turn down the temperature and put the bird upside down. Can't wait. Yep, that will be delicious, and I'm sure it will work great. Kimberly, I will never fry a turkey. A friend of mine was frying a turkey and oil splattered down his boot and burned his foot really bad. There's a lot of garages that catch on fire around Thanksgiving because of fried birds. I know. Just like canning, that's why I don't can. It's the same same thing. We had a cousin that canning jar exploded and cut her, cut her fairly bad and burned her pretty bad. That's why I don't can. I will can if I absolutely have to, but that's why I don't do it. Christy, thanks for the laugh. Yes, the gravy was overflowing on the stove. Then we had a fire in the oven. Oh, yes. So our Thanksgiving on fire video that we did live, my goodness, what was that, four years ago now? Must have been. Yeah, I think so. Four, wow, has it been four years since I did that? Oh, my goodness. Seriously? Wow. That one I didn't get. Wanda, actually. the important thing for holiday meals is being with your loved ones, not what you eat. Wanda, you know, there are years I would beg to differ on that. <laughs> Depends on the loved ones you're with. <laughs> you may not want to be with your loved ones on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Just saying. You know, <laughs> there are some loved ones that uh, we would rather not be around for Thanksgiving. 
Ah, oh, Maryland, what sides do we fix for our Thanksgiving dinners? We just do traditional stuffing, cranberry sauce in the can. Then we'll make some jello salads like jello, whipped cream, mandarin oranges, coconut. Um, we will make like pistachio, uh, Watergate. Oh my goodness, that all sounds so good. Do I blow my diet for Thanksgiving? Oh, I forgot about the pistachio pudding with the marshmallows and the whipped cream and the walnuts. Oh, that is so good. And then we have dinner rolls. And then of course we have the turkey. And then we'll have usually apple and pumpkin and pecan pie. And mom makes gingerbread men for the boys. That's, that's about all we do really. Um, we don't really go too much out. Um, let's see. Elaine, will the turkey brown at all that way? No, but if you want to take the foil off, you can either uh, turn your temperature up to 350 and brown it, or you can broil it under the broiler if you want the skin. Should I add the butter if we bought a butter ball? Elizabeth, yes, I would, because they don't put enough in there. They actually put butter in butter ball? Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought it was just called that. That's why it's called butter ball. They actually put <clears throat> butter in there. But they don't put as much as we do, and ours tastes better. Uh, LaDonna, you can send me the next batch. Would an electric roaster be the same as an oven? Yes. Well, not quite the same, but it's close enough. One, there's, and I don't know why a roaster is different from a crock pot, but... I've had a roaster chicken or a turkey and an oven turkey, and they have a different flavor than the crock pot. I don't know why that is, but they do for some reason. Wanda, I was at my neighbor's last night, and when I left, she gave me seven cans of green beans because they were getting close to the pull date. I happily accepted that. Oh, yeah, those will last, my goodness, five or ten more years. Kimberly, my husband always likes the leftovers and the sandwiches after Thanksgiving more than the dinner itself. I know. I think I do, too, actually. Well, I really like Thanksgiving dinner. I would say it's probably my favorite meal. All right. If you guys have questions, please put them in the comments and put the word question if you can, because Mike um, can see it easier to pull them. Laura, are you able to have the undated planners every year? So our undated planners, guys, we are using our old printer in Colorado, and they are going to have um, a black a black spiral due to uh, supply chain issues. So we oh, probably I need to put that on there. But I said metal spiral the other day. Yeah, we'll, we'll need to change that. Uh, but um, we are going to try to keep having them every year, but, you know. It's a black plastic spiral. Yeah, Jesus is coming soon, so who knows how many years it'll be. If we're gone with Jesus, then nope, I won't. But if we're still here, then yes, we'll, we're going to try and keep going. Let me tell you, it's not like I didn't try. Since July, we have been working on getting these planners since July. I know, but they either couldn't get paper or, I mean, or they wouldn't just get back to us. We were trying to get bigger printers because our printer in Colorado is just a family owned printer. So we were trying to get bigger printers and do like a thousand of them. But they're not even responding to our queries. Our family printer is the one that we first did it with and we love them. They're awesome. And they're friends of ours now, but we they were so overwhelmed, overwhelmed with the first time because we just pushed a lot more through than they were expecting. Now they know what to expect. <laughs> So they so, can brace themselves and take their heart medicine first. Yeah. <laughs> so. And poor Farid, he's he's the owner. He um he called because he thought that they had put the wrong insides on after they'd spent hours. <laughs> <laughs> and he thought they had put the wrong inside. And he just about I thought he was gonna have a heart attack on the phone. Wanda, you've got a good point about Thanksgiving and loved ones. I know. I know. We're not going to mention any names, but Chrissy, you're, Tara, you're in rare form tonight. I love it. What am I doing that I'm in rare form? Thank you. Um, I don't know what I'm doing, but thank you. Uh, when you said about, it's not always about being with family or something like that. <laughs> what you said about that. Oh, yeah. 
Um, okay. Do we have any more questions? Let me see what we got. What temp for the oven? Um, okay. So 250 for an hour and then turn it down to 200 for the night. If you're cooking it overnight to cook, to eat around noon. And then if it's done in the morning, cause your forks will tear the meat. Just, I mean, they won't even tear the meat. It'll just fall off with a fork. If it falls off with a fork, it's done. Just keep it sealed up and turn it down to 150 to 170 until you're ready to eat. Um, Christy says the pulp, so the people say that makes the paper is in shortage. I don't understand why. It's not like we've been, it's not like the trees got that thing going around. Maybe it's because of shipping issues is what I'm assuming, but I don't know. What pies for you as well? Do you make your pies ahead and, and serve cold? So we make our pies the day before and serve cold, yes. But we warm them up in the oven if we want to or the microwave if you want to. Um, what pies freeze well? Well, I would say any of your cream pies that use whipped cream, like your uh, coconut cream. Oh, that sounds so good. Oh, my goodness. I need to just stop talking about Thanksgiving food. Your chocolate cream, your coconut cream. I think I'm going to have to blow my diet for Thanksgiving. Is it worth having a migraine for two days to have coconut cream pie again? Well, coconut cream pie is dairy-free, so I could do that for me. It'd be just be the sugar. I could do that. I don't know. We'll see. So any of your cream pies would freeze well. Your apple pie would freeze fine. You're actually, your pumpkin pie would freeze fine, too. The only, let's see, what's the pies that wouldn't freeze? What pie wouldn't freeze well? I honestly can't think of any pie that wouldn't freeze well. I think pretty much all of them would, actually. Mike's sending me the next question, guys. If you have questions, put them in there, and I'll try to answer it. Sarah, do you know how to make gravy so it's not lumpy? Yes, I was actually going to do a quick video on that. The Secret to Gravy, Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 1, 25% off right now, guys, is... Put your flour or your cornstarch or arrowroot, whatever you use to thicken, in some cold water first and get it mixed up and get it all dissolved in the cold water first. Then pour it in your boiling broth and it will thicken without lumps. There's no reason for lumpy gravy, gravy and no reason for lumpy mashed potatoes. Ma lumpy mashed potatoes are because you didn't cook them long enough. You should be able to put a knife in and it should just easily go into your potatoes. Easily go into the potatoes. Um, yeah. Do you need Jonathan to help with Troll Patrol? Uh, maybe. Jonathan, start slaying away if you're still a... My, you, Jonathan should still be a moderator on there. Uh, um, Sarah, will one stick of butter do for a 20-pound turkey? Yes, it will. It will be plenty. Donna, do you watch any special TV shows or movies during the Thanksgiving holiday? Yes, Christmas movies, but we always, 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 every Thanksgiving, watch the Everybody Loves Raymond vegan turkey episode. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yes. We should watch that tonight. I need a good laugh. That is my favorite Thanksgiving show of all times. When the kids were little, of course, we would watch Charlie Brown every Thanksgiving. We loved Charlie Brown. Haven't watched that for a while either. But Charlie Brown, but everybody loves Raymond Thanksgiving. It, the vegan turkey episode is the all-time funniest episode ever. What's his brother's name? Um... What's Raymond's brother's name? Oh, good grief. How can I forget Raymond's brother's name? Uh, Everybody loves Raymond. Oh, it's Brad Garrett, but who is it? Brad Garrett plays. Uh, uh, how can we forget his brother's name? Oh, my goodness. There's going to be a million people saying it. Okay, here. guys, tell me everybody loves Raymond's brother's name. Good grief. The tofu turkey episode. Yes, Kimberly, thank you. The tofu turkey episode. Robert. Robert. Uh, Robert. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Shelly was the first one I saw. Thank you. 
Robert, when Robert eats the tofu, tofu turkey and he's trying not to insult Deborah and his mom and he's going. It's delicious or whatever it is. That's like my favorite. <laughs> the tofu turkey episode. Oh my goodness. That is like the best Thanksgiving episode ever. Oh yeah. Okay. Beverly, I'm eating ham salad, three bites of stuffing, three bites of fudge, fudge pie. That's it. No cranberry sauce, no rolls. Can't do it. <laughs> yeah, that ain't Thanksgiving. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, man. Lorraine, what temp for the... Okay, did that one. Uh, single guy, simple life. What is your opinion on the news channel saying that Thanksgiving food is more expensive than last year? They are lying. Lies straight from the pit of hell. If you want to know my opinion, all they're wanting you to do is click on a new story. And the problem is, I can do a video proving that Thanksgiving dinner is not any more expensive this year than it was last year. Okay, maybe it's five or six bucks more expensive this year than it was last year. Probably not though. But nobody would watch the video. I can prove it all day long, but nobody would watch the video. Uh, what, let's see, what, oh, what was I discussed about having to throw out? I never told you. Sorry, Cheryl, you're right. You can send me the next batch. Okay. So what happened was uh, I bought a six pound pork roast. The next batch. You guys have questions. Put them in the comments for Mike to pull. I bought a six pound pork roast. I had my mouth all set for pork roast and I pulled it out of the fridge and realized it was a week past the sell by date, but it was vacuum sealed. So I thought it was fine. So I opened it up and was going to use it anyway, but then it kind of had an off smell and I wasn't quite sure if it was the pork roast or cause we haven't had a pork roast for a really long time. So I was like, man, is that an off smell? Cause it's going bad. Or is that an off smell because it's a pork roast? I wasn't quite sure. So mom convinced me to just toss it out because really don't need to be getting food poisoning right now if we're having to go to Colorado with grandma or if we're having Thanksgiving next week, don't really need to be getting food poisoning. So I threw out a six pound pork roast. I only paid 99 cents a pound, so I only lost six bucks, but still I have my mouth all set for our cranberry ham sauce, which is so delicious. Oh my goodness, Dining on a Dime, volume one, 25% off right now. You guys, any ham or turkey too, it's really good with the turkey, our cranberry ham sauce. And it's, um, it is cranberry jelly. Let me find the exact recipe. Uh, sorry, which thing did you say to share? Um, Just the book thing? Yeah. Sorry, I was momentarily distracted. On page 398, volume one. Excuse me, the ham sauce. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's the wrong one. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's the cranberry. It's the jellied cranberry sauce right here on page 396. It is. Jellied, you know, the canned cranberry sauce with mustard, lemon juice, and cloves. And it is so good on turkey or ham. Oh my goodness, I'm getting extra cranberry sauce just for that because it is so delicious. You guys will love it. You will absolutely love it. Okay, let me see if there's any questions. I found a 22 pound turkey from two years ago that was buried under venison. I would cook it, Christy. See it. Here's the thing. You're out literally 25 cents. It costs 25 cents a day to run a gas oven. You're out 25 cents cooking time and 50 cents for one stick of butter if it doesn't work. So for a dollar or for 75 cents, it's worth trying it to see if the turkey will taste fine. Cause usually they do. Um, all right, let's see. Are there any questions? Uh, did I have a couple Kimberly of says her husband watched Raymond reruns every night. Yeah. 
Uh, Misty, the other day you said if you had a roast in the freezer, you don't buy anymore, even if it's on sale, why not? Huh? The other day I said, if you have a roast in the freezer, you don't buy any more, even if it's on sale, why not? I was wondering if you maybe said, if the freezer is full of roast, you don't buy any more. Even. Oh, yeah. If my freezer is full of roasts, then I don't keep buying it. Because Tara would buy it till it's full. Yeah. And then once the freezer is full... And, and at the same time, if she knew that meat was going to be on sale, um, she would we buy would, less because yeah. she buys bread and milk and stuff like that and freezes it. But she would kind of let that stuff work its way out of the freezer if she knew meat was going to be on yeah, sale. Yeah, you want soon. your freezer to be the expensive stuff like meat. Now, I do have bread occasionally in there when meat's not on sale and we're getting low, but I don't buy bread over meat if it's on sale. I have two freezers, a big one and a little one that I got for free. Um, so, yeah. How do you defrost frozen pies? I just set it in the fridge or on the counter. Um, And let me see. Oh, yeah, Christy, if it's slimy, then it's bad. Um, What is the blue cheese dip? The blue cheese dip, I think, is in dining volume two, 25% off right now, guys. Let me look it up and see if it's in dining volume two. It is blue cheese. And um, no, it's not in there. Oh, no. Do we not have Mom's blue cheese dip in any of the books? Oh, dear. It's on the website. If you look on the website, um, we didn't put it. I was pretty sure we didn't put it in dining because it's, ex oh, no, it is. Yeah, page 215, volume one, page two. We must have added it later. 215, volume one. This was one of the recipes that we put in with the 40 on this new edition. That's what it was. I forgot. Yep. Yep, yep, page 215 right there. It is blue cheese, cream cheese, butter, almonds, and ripe olives. Oh, my goodness, it's so good. You toast the almonds, and then you mix everything else together, and it's it's actually really good. I used to not like it, but Mom had it so much, and then I started eating little bits of it, and it's actually really good. And if you can't do, uh, well, yeah, no, there's no way to really do it gluten-free or dairy-free that I know of. I mean, I guess there is, there is blue cheese goat milk. So you could get goat milk cheese and goat milk blue cheese and eat that. Okay. Um, grocery outlet is opening tomorrow. Been waiting months. Wow. That's good. Although I will say the grocery outlet that we went to when we lived in Idaho, it wasn't that great. Mm. Uh, yeah, I just, I don't know. just didn't do it. Um, uh, Tay Tay says I'm a new wife and homeowner and I made my own pumpkin pie and it was so good. I was so proud of myself. I used pumpkins I had for fall decor. There you go. Yeah. So the difference between big pumpkins and pie pumpkins is pie pumpkins have less moisture. So if you use a big pumpkin, you may have to strain some of the moisture off, which is fine. That's not going to hurt anything. But just so you know, that's why. Uh, I don't know if you saw Facebook. Diana asked, how do you defrost frozen pies? Oh, uh, yeah. I already answered that one. That one. Okay. Yep. And um, let's see. Oh, did, you that already? did Tara say she tried her turkey method with a small roaster chicken? Yeah. Yeah, I, that's how I cook my chickens, too. That's how my, I cook my chickens. So for those of you just joining us, um, we have our daily yearly planners, guys, right here. The huge planners. We found a printer. I'm letting everybody know because every day I get emails and comments from people. Please bring the planner. Okay. We finally found a printer and have it um, being printed right now if you want our planners. Barbara, what type of steak do you think is the best? I've done filet mignon and never had any luck. I just get whatever's on sale that week. I don't know. Just whatever's on sale. Steak for what? What kind of steak do I think is the best? I just go with what's cheap. Um, filet is tender but doesn't have a lot of flavor. But it's usually pretty pricey too. I have no idea. I just get what's on sale for $4.97. 
Happy Camper. The same conversation literally happened last year. The blue cheese dip is not in volume one. And if I remember right, it's on the website. Yeah, it's in volume one. It's in volume one. When we did this version, we updated it, it from the old uh, spiral versions. We added the blue cheese dip. That was one of the 40. That was one of the 40 um, recipes that we added new in this edition. Nancy, how do we purchase the planner? Mike will put the link in there for you. And no, there's not going to be a 2023 edition, only the undated edition. And there are no sales on it because it's printed in the United States. We really don't make a lot of money on it. <laughs> well, yeah. Mike wasn't real happy about me printing it this year, Mr. Finance Man was like, we're not making very much on these. I was like, I know, but people really want them. We almost got divorced, but we're still married, barely. Mainly it's- After we, we paid for the marriage counseling, it really wasn't paying well. We just have to tie up a whole bunch of money <laughs> in it. And then the money eventually comes back when we sell it, but with no extra money. So that's yeah. Why, that's so, why it's- Not yeah. the best business decision. But at the but same time- I know people really like them. Yeah, which so. is why we were trying to find bigger printers where we could possibly get it for a cheaper deal, like in South Korea where we have our books printed. But yeah. Do you have a particular brand of rennet for cheese making you recommend? Nope, because I don't make cheese. I don't know how to make cheese. It's something I've always wanted to do, but I've never done that. Maybe I should just do that sometime. And how long do you roast the chicken? I put it in the morning when I get up and like eight, like not eight to 10 o'clock in the morning. And I let it cook all day till dinner at five. Um, I did, uh, Ooh, I one. did share the recipe for that turkey and also some more of the Thanksgiving recipes. Again. Okay. Uh, I have no idea what this name is, but one of their kids picked up the gluten-free cookbook right here. Whoops. Wrong one. The gluten-free cookbook right here. Guys, gluten-free does not have to taste nasty. This is really good gluten-free recipes. I guarantee it. And the daily planner for her. Yay. Thank you. I am so appreciative of them ordering for you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> uh uh, Cabney, 58, Heather, I have lived on Long Island. Oh, wait, she's talking to someone else. Sorry. I didn't realize what is with the um, trolls tonight. My goodness. All right. Uh, let's see. Oh, there, there aren't any. Uh, Mom cooked our Thanksgiving turkey last year using a recipe tart, and it was delicious. She's still cooking it again this year. Rachel, I am so glad. I am so glad. Um, okay. Let's see. Experiments are fun. Tar. Yeah, actually I like experimenting with food, uh, especially like cheese making and weird stuff like that. SW just ordered the cookbook volume one for her husband's Christmas gift to me. I do that all the time. Dear, you're buying this for me. The planner is being printed in the United States in Colorado by our good friends, Copy Co in Fort Collins, Colorado. If you go there, tell them I said hi. Tell them I sent you. I tell them I said hi because I talk to them almost every day. <laughs> mm. um, so, yeah. Okay. What kind of church do we go to? What kind of church do we go to? We go to an evangelical Bible-based church. At the moment, it is a Baptist church, but we are not just Baptist we have gone to evangelical free churches. We have gone to Calvary Chapel churches. Every denomination has good churches and bad churches in this town. The one that we like the best is the Baptist church here. And so that is the one that we go to here. Jim, new book idea. How to stay married while doing YouTube channels together. Well, I'll have to have someone else write that book because we still haven't figured that out. So you mean we're not still married? <laughs> well, we're still married, but I don't know. What I'd take advice from us. Adventures with Toti, Mike. Exactly. How do they clone me? Should I delete my channel and start over? No, no. Uh, okay, so what they do is they look at this chat and they want to blend into the chat. So they say, "Oh, here's a name," and they grab that name and that picture, and then they make a new account that has nothing to do with you. 
yeah. but it looks like you. So when they post in there, people will be confused and think it's you. And so you're not in any way compromised. So I wouldn't worry about that. I, and, and I already got rid of the one that was pretending to be you, but yeah. unfortunately people can pretend to be you and it's hard to stop that. Um, it's just a thing on the internet, but I blocked them. So they're gone forever. Yep. Diana, do I freeze fresh sweet potatoes as leftovers? So I don't know what you mean. If you mean cooked, yes, I freeze them as cooked. Um, they don't really freeze well uncooked that I know of. Maybe they do. I don't know. I've never frozen them uncooked. But I cook my sweet potatoes. And that's something else I stock up on this time of year. And um, then I will cook them and store them flat in baggies in the freezer. Or I will dehydrate them. Mom dehydrates them for me in our dehydrator. I just pulled my autographed cookbook, Tracy says. Aw, thanks. Thoughts on the world? Oh, dear. <laughs> okay, how late are we going to be here tonight, dear? <laughs> you need to take a bathroom break before we get into this. I don't know what you're getting into. <laughs> Christy, but... thoughts on the world's spiritual leaders rewriting the Ten Commandments. I'm furious. So we've been asked to comment on this. You're not the first person, actually. But would you like to give your two cents? I just think that God's not going to be happy about that. <laughs> and they're idiots for thinking they can do it. That's pretty much what I, all I have to say about that. Now you had a lot more to say about that yesterday. Well, I mean, what did I say? I don't remember, but <laughs> it was quite a while, quite a long, quite a long discussion. We well, had. mostly I was, I couldn't figure out for sure which things were actually the things they were saying because I saw three or four different versions that people had posted in different places and I couldn't figure out what was going on with that fake Ten Commandments thing. But I do recall that um, a lot of it was about, um, like, a lot of it was about all religions being the same and about God is commanding people to do, you know, green things and all that. And that is entirely against the Bible. <laughs> and I can't imagine that anyone would, uh, I mean, we are supposed to take care of the world, but it's a real, it's like a completely different religion and they're pretending like it's from God. So I've decided I I'm going to start calling it the Romans one twenty five religion. It's so foolishly ridiculous that I, I can't even believe that they're trying to say it with a straight face. <laughs> I mean, it's absolutely Especially people who claim to be leaders of um, big church groups <laughs> so yeah <clears throat> done yeah no ellen I, i'm not saying they're all the same i think that that's what this world group uh, that's that was talking about the new ten commandments um which is a kind of a silly somebody's silly pipe dream <laughs> yeah kenneth says how do we make grasshopper leg taste like delicious for thanksgiving <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's really stupid. It's stuff like thou shalt observe the Sabbath and they want nobody to drive on Sunday. Thou shalt observe the Sabbath something or other so that the earth can take a rest from all of your pollution. And it's like thou shalt not spend as much time on social media. Well, yeah, it's great not to spend as much time on social media, but it's kind of insulting God to throw in the face of God such trivial things <laughs> because you have an agenda that's basically a religion. Uh opposite of the religion that you claim to be the world leader of. <laughs> so. yep. Nancy says the gluten-free bread recipe in our gluten-free dairy-free book is less than $2. Store-bought is $7 and it is delicious. Yes, I prefer this over store-bought. It is so good and it's super, super easy to make. If you guys are gluten-free, dairy-free, you need to check it out. Uh, for those of you who are wondering... <laughs> who mentioned the Mount Sinai, actually Egypt denied them permission <laughs> at the last minute, so they weren't able it's to. pretty eat. funny, actually. Yeah. Uh, Ellen, I saw your debt-free scream video that you sent me. That is pretty cool. I know you guys have been working on that, and I am so proud of you for doing that. Good job! Yay! <laughs> Ellen and her husband paid off like $167,000 or some huge amount of money in three years. I knew when you first started going, you would get there. Oh, I don't know if you saw, but Tracy asked, my volume two cookbook is red like volume one. Is there a difference? No. no. We just changed it to blue because people were getting confused and yes. they didn't know what they thought one and two were the same book because they were both red. So we changed this one to blue so people would know. So if you same have book. a red one, 
You got a collector's it's item. It's probably going to be a collector's item. So when I croak, <laughs> put it on eBay and pay off all your debt. Original first edition red one. We were talking about that. We got to go do our will tomorrow again. And I was like, I told Mike, I said, man, I don't know if the kids want to keep the business going if we die, but it, if you die, then it'll probably be worth something because everybody will want the book then because I'm dead. So I'm thinking, hey, maybe we should do this. All right. Um, how have I heard, not heard about the uh, tin? Yeah, I mean, the whole tin, I hadn't heard about it. And apparently this is not something new. When I looked, like 2015 was when it first came out. It's just, they were just going to meet on Mount Sinai was the new part. So Susan B says, thou shalt not believe the news. Yeah. No, it's a real thing that they have going around. It's a real thing. It's just absolutely stupid. Um, but, you know, so, yeah. Anyway, uh, do you use bread machine to make bread? I do not. Nope. I don't. Uh, Barbara, don't leave Tara and Mike. Well, I'm not planning on going anywhere, but you never know when a semi is going to take you out or something. So we got to get our, our, well, we have a will, but it's different now that we have adult kids and minor kids. Uh, oh, Susan. Yes. Did we get the picture of the three-legged turkey? Yes. You did get it? I did. Why didn't yeah. you show it to me? <laughs> um, is it on this computer? I, oh, it might be on that computer. Let's see. Oh, and I forgot I was going to do a video on that. Oh, shoot. I forgot about that. I was going to do a video on that. Um, Wanda, if you can't drive on Sunday, how do you get to church? That's the point. They don't want you going to church because that's your religion, not God. I mean, that's what this whole Romans 125 religion is now. And so, yeah. So anyway, um, I like to see <laughs> Shannon tagged her husband. I think it's her husband here. Hint, hint, cough, cough. Christmas is coming. <laughs> and it's 25% right now. So <laughs> tagged yeah. her husband on that. <laughs> the listing for the book. That's oh, hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Tracy says her debt is paid off thanks to our advice. And she's the one with the autographed copy. Yay. All right. Yes, I would miss you guys. Oh, thanks. Well, the good news is we have like close to 1,800, if not more than 1,800 videos now. So you guys, if we croak, you can just keep replaying and you will have 15 years worth of videos to watch. It's not too likely. Just so, we just, but at the same time, we realized, oh, we should probably make more specific instructions about some things that yeah. have changed in our family yeah. since the last time we did. Well, the last time we did our will, we were in the middle of court with Mike's parents suing us, and we had to make sure that we were just super airtight on our will because we didn't want anything to be any of our children to be harmed by them later, and. Now we have adult children. This is what we don't know how to do. How do you do it when you have adult children and minor children? So that if you die, then how does that work? So that the minor children are still taken care of, but the adult children don't sell everything off like the house under the minor children so that they can finish through high school or college. And then all the kids can sell everything. I mean, don't get me wrong. I don't think any of my kids would like just, purposely go and just hurt each other or anything but you know just to make sure that they're taken care of and that kind of thing i don't know how that works so we got to talk to the lawyer because i don't know i guess you'd have to put in a trust or something i don't know it seems like it'd be really complicated but now that we have a minor and the other three are adults so anyway that's what we're trying to figure out uh, we have 300 planners at the moment being printed, and I've already sold a third of them, about a third of them. So 300 planters be that, um, that are being sold right now. I just put them for sale. I think, well, they've been for sale for a week, but we've really just been pushing them this week because we just couldn't do it. So... Yeah. Um, amazing Grace. We're like family to you. Oh, thanks. Wow. 
Could we Thank teach you. the angels your recipes? No, if we die, no. that's what they're saying. <laughs> we... Oh, the angels in heaven that we're fluttering with when we die. But they don't need that food because their food is every word that falls from the mouth of God. <gasps> oh, look at you, spiritual thing, you. <laughs> Uh, lukewarm, no more, very easy. Nothing happens till the minors are of age. And that's kind of what I was. That's what we were thinking. That's what I was thinking it would be. But like we have the business too. And so I don't want to force the kids to keep the business going if they don't want to keep it going. So, yeah, we don't know how to, we don't know what we're going to do with that. Um, have you that's ever made we're... any garden videos? Uh, I made a few gardening videos about 10 years ago. No, no, like eight years. Yeah, 10 years ago or so. So I have a few on there. Um, don't talk like that, Tara. We all love you guys so very much. I uh, don't make me cry. Oh, I'm sorry. Don't cry, Barbara. But <laughs> you know what? There's only one thing guaranteed. It's death and taxes. Unless Wait, the Lord. two things. <laughs> two things. <laughs> that's death and taxes. And I can't count. Unless Jesus comes back, we're all going sometime. I'm not planning on it. I am not planning on it i'm not planning on it but you know here's the thing people say oh i don't want to talk about that oh don't talk about that oh we don't want to talk about that. no it's better to talk about it and tell your kids what you have planned and what you know so when it you so that if something happened they're not shocked that they're not going to be able to sell everything and just take it and spend it on a new tesla or whatever but um, I think it's much better to have it all written out and all four kids, hopefully, depending on what happens with grandma are going to be here. And this may be the last time we're together, the four kids and us for quite a while, if not several years, we don't know. And so, um, so we wanted to get it done so we can talk to all of them during Thanksgiving and let them know if we croak, here's what's going to happen. So you guys know. And so, Anyway, you know, I'm not planning on it. I don't, my heart, I think is fine. <laughs> my heart is fine, I think. Uh, <clears throat> but you never know when a deer is going to run out in front of the car or something. So, Man, I anyway. was standing out there today. I think I'd just taken the trash cans <laughs> out to the curb and I was standing there. I think I looked at something on my phone for a second. Uh, oh, about the taking the car in. And while I was sitting there, this buck, a deer, just walked right past me and he just looked over like what's up <laughs> yeah those things all take you out man well actually it's kind of funny because uh they're where we are i think they know that they're that's safe for them here <laughs> so at, at this particular property i don't know so, if food gets to be any more well, i was gonna say to... if there was a problem we would be covered but uh but because they know i think that we don't hassle them at all they're pretty calm although he walked by but i didn't approach him because yeah. it's stupid to approach them yeah don't <laughs> in case ever you, approach in case you didn't know that <laughs> yeah yeah they'll take you out uh there are not going to be any discounts on the planners no discounts on the planners um because they're printed in the united states and colorado we just we don't get we make, a whole lot. We barely make it's money a on super these. Super narrow margin because yeah, uh, <clears throat> because the cost of producing it is a, yeah is about the same price as the maximum people would want to yeah. pay for it. And by the time we count shipping to us, and then all of the post office losses and stuff like that, we just really don't make a lot on it. Um, transfer of death. They always be prepared. Okay. That's good to know, huh? Uh, we, so uh, somebody did say if we ran out of planners that we do sell a digital one and they print mm -hmm. one in Office Max. Although I would have to say we will probably keep printing them if, if this works well, since they're undated, we can just, we don't have to recreate the wheel every year again. Uh, and it would be cheaper to buy one that we had printed at the printer just because the, the eBooks printed are a lot more expensive. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's um, cheaper for the ebooks, but a lot more expensive to print them. <laughs> uh, 
Amazing Grace, my father's 82 and won't tell us what his plans are and won't tell us if he has a will. He thinks he's going to live forever. See, that's just that's just flat out irresponsible and stupid. I'm sorry, but it is. If you think that you are just being flat out irresponsible, and you know what? You don't love your kids very much if you do that. That kind of thing makes me so mad because your kids are in the middle of grieving and now they have to deal with this whole mess because you didn't deal with it. Ugh. That makes, I'm not going to go off like I did last week, but that kind of thing just makes me so mad. At least tell your kids what you're planning so they know what to expect. You know, one thing about uh, trusts, some people were talking about trusts and they, I think they can be really good. <clears throat> I'm not an attorney, so you would want to ask your lawyer, but I do know that my grandmother set up a trust with a lawyer's office as the, um, the trustee or the manager of the trust. And over the years, all of the trusts went into legal fees. <laughs> so you have to be careful how you set it up to make sure that whoever yeah. is in charge of it uh, can be trusted. Yeah. But also if it's a business like a law office, their business is to make money. So, so if they, they stay in control of it too long, it'll eventually all go away. Yeah. So you have to be a little careful on a lot of things like yeah. that. On the planners, guys, the printer that we have right now is printing 300 of them. So there is a limited quantity right now, but they should be able to print more if they can get paper. The big caveat right now is paper, is they're having a hard time getting paper. So we have 300 that they were able to buy paper for right now. Hopefully when we sell those 300, they'll be able to do more, but I'm not guaranteeing anything. I, this point in the craziness of the world, I can't guarantee anything. So, um, oh my goodness. What? Amazing Grace says her dad says that he actually said he wouldn't make a will so we could fight over everything. She said, I don't think that's funny at all. No, that's not funny at all. It's, that's you know, just wrong. Something else based on experience of seeing family members die with um, various not very good plans is I've, I always thought it'd be kind of cool when I go to have, have everything that the family has to sort through fit into a briefcase <laughs> because um, I had a couple of family members who are huge collectors and they had no very clear plans and family members had to spend ages and ages sorting through everything and trying to figure out what to do with everything. And, and I think if you're, if you collect a lot of things, you might think about that. Oh, shut up. <laughs> I'm looking at you when I say it. <laughs> Actually, you know, you don't now, collect here's a lot of things. My thing. no, you don't collect I have a lot, a lot of, of stuff. I don't think you do. Well, you have a lot more. But money, but. Here's my deal on my stuff. My kid, well, I have enough money now. That when I die, my kids, and I'm going to tell them this when we have our little family meeting when they come for Thanksgiving, that I am okay if they want to hire a dumpster and just dump it all, or if they want to hire, or if they want to hire a moving truck and just haul it all to the thrift store, I don't care. Now, there are some valuable things that we probably need to get written down that they really probably shouldn't dump. But it's not that much stuff. It's only a couple of things. And so the rest of it, I don't care what they do with it. And I don't even care with the with the valuable stuff if they do something with it. But if they want to trash it, I can't do anything with it. I'm going to have Jesus. I'm going to have streets of gold. gold. So grandma's four pieces of forks that are silver, <laughs> I ain't going to care. Because I'm going to be dancing with Jesus. I think it's interesting because in the Bible, it seems like silver is used for a lot of fancy, amazing things, and gold is the pavement. <laughs> so I was just, oh, I was noticing well, that's that the true. other day. I forgot about that. Oh, so gold's pavement. <laughs> yes, think about it. Not that gold is less, it's just. Well, it must be. It's pavement. <laughs> it must be. Um. Okay, let's see. Yeah, Barbara, uh, it's rutting season, so be careful around those bucks. Yes, 
Definitely. Well, what's really strange is I think here that I thought the season here was last month. Um, but today I think I, it's still happening. Today I saw one <laughs> running after a doe. Um, they're pretty aggressive. But but there's several that have just walked past me at different times where they're it's like they have no thought in the world but just to kind of wander around. And um, but I definitely know you definitely don't want to get near them. And I even when they approach me and I don't realize they're coming, I'm still a little bit thoughtful of okay. <laughs> This guy could be a little bit moody right now. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. But but I at the same time I found that my experience with them has well, I've never had a bad experience with them, but I've seen other people have bad experience with them and and always it's because the people are approaching the animals. I've had the animals approach me before, but uh I don't encourage it when particularly when they're like that have we ever seen a live birth near our property we have not mm -mm. although well i thought last summer one was it was acting really weird and so i got the camera out and was recording for an hour and come to find out i think that she had already given birth and was just like recovering so yeah i think so mm. today though Oh my goodness, I almost thought the UPS man was going to give me a viral video. <laughs> so when you see next Tuesday's video, when you see next Tightwad Tuesday's video, you will see how Mike's procrastination <clears throat> Oh, do you want to get into this on the air? Cost us a great deal of money. My and the UPS guy got stuck in the driveway because he couldn't get through the driveway. Mike's procrastination <clears throat> after Mike said, we'll never buy any more used small machines again. And it's somehow we ended up next with week. two more. You approved. You I approved, approved after being. You, oh, I did not. Yes. No, I did not. Yes. You, yes. Okay. Who, Martini donations for marriage counseling? Because <laughs> I'm right. Anyway, UPS got stuck in our driveway even though mike and the boys had shoveled they didn't our driveway is really huge so they didn't get part of the driveway and i thought the ups guy was going to take out the fence and the flagpole and the trees in our front yard today i had my camera recording not for proof which i guess would have been good too but more for he probably thought it was for proof. The viral aspect of it, because I was sure that video was going to go viral. Yeah, he almost took it all out. He had like not even six inches, I don't think. Yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, no, D. Parker says Wyoming tourists get hurt petting bison. Yeah, bison are not. They're not fuzzy, cuddly little things. Actually, in Colorado, they would people would get hurt trying to pet. I, I saw some people walking close to a bull elk trying to have their kids pet it. Uh, but also, a lot of people take selfies where they're they're standing there with the elk behind them and they're getting closer and closer to the elk to frame up the shot. <laughs> and they just have no concept of how dangerous that is. Krista says, open up the Bible. There's your marriage counselor. That'll be $50, please. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, oh. Kimberly, you need to put a blade on a riding lawnmower or a really big snowblower. Yeah, we're just going to, we need a riding lawnmower too, but they're not selling them, of course, this time of year. So we're just going to go ahead and have to spend 1500 bucks on a snowblower. Well, our property can't really do a riding lawnmower because <sighs> it's too steep. Uh, Sanguine Links, I think you had delivery issues when you first moved there. They couldn't get in the garage. I might be misremembering. So the issue is that our driveway turns enough where a big truck can't get all the way around. Some trucks can, but the really, really big ones can't get all the way around it. So in that case, we were having to take a pallet jack up the hill and uh, a number of people and, and rolling them down the hill. And each pallet is a couple of thousand pounds. So we got a load of Bibles it coming. Adventure. We got a load of Bibles coming next week. And we're like, oh my goodness, is the driveway going to be clear before the Bibles get here? I don't think it is. So we may have to haul. If that happens, just put them on the sled 
and have the boys slide them down the driveway. Yeah. That would work really well. Kenneth says that our fresh bread would be all they would need for a delicious Thanksgiving meal. Oh, thanks. We have some really good bread recipes in both Dining on a Dime 1 and 2. 25% off. Thank you, Kenneth. 25% off right now. Um, <clears throat> let's see. Uh, they have plows for the John Deere. Yeah, I mean, if we had chains on a on a on a mower, that would probably work just uh, fine. But I don't know. It depends on how deep it got. So I don't. Yeah, Mike said the two boards should get the snowblower up into the truck. We'll see. I don't know how we're going to do that because those things are heavy, and I don't think even I four the boys of us. And I were going to do that. I didn't think the four of us could even lift it in there. Are you thinking, what kind of snowblower are you thinking of? Well, you're going to need a big one. Are you thinking like a giant tractor? No, but like those, that thing is heavy in there. I think the boys and I and the people at Home Depot can take care of it. And how are you going to get it out, out at home? <laughs> I mean, if you want to supervise, then you can be involved. <laughs> Otherwise, let the, yes, you said that's why you had sons. <laughs> Like I said, just saying. Um, the no ingredient for the four oh ingredient gosh. no need bread. Yes, that is very good. Uh, my father in law used a skid lo loader for plowing. He's got a mile long driveway and it lasted him for 29 years. Oh, that's a good idea. Well, yeah, just put a pallet on the back of the pickup and put some chains on the pickup with some sandbags, and there you go. Put a pallet on the front of the pickup. On the back of the pickup. And drag a pallet up. No, a skid loader isn't that. That's not what a skid I know, but a pallet would work. If you want to do that, you can. A pallet would work. <laughs> See? And Wanda says we could get a sled and eight tiny reindeer. See, there you go. What I, I know. What I thought would be kind of cool, except <clears throat> it's probably not really practical, but I thought it would be kind of cool to get a, a snowplow blade and... Just part, leave it constantly in front of the pickup. And when it snows, drive up and hook it onto the pickup. I don't know what it takes to do that, but, and then come out and plow it with the pickup and a, and a plow blade. Because instead of taking like 80 runs across it, we could take five. <laughs> so, but then we could use it and rent it to the neighbors too, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um they don't deliver here valerie or we would have them deliver it <laughs> um guys our planners i know i keep mentioning it but because people keep asking me and emailing it that's why we keep uh talking about it planners are in stock or being printed now at the printer in stock around december 10th is what we are thinking um maybe a little bit earlier and our Dining on a Dime cookbooks, 25% off right now, guys. I don't know if we're having a live show next Wednesday or not. It depends on mom and I have to go to Colorado to be with grandma. We don't know what's going to happen with that. So it might just be Mike answering Bible questions next week. I don't know. But um, we are going to probably still be live. I just don't know who it's going to be. So, all right, guys, please check out our website, livingonadime.com. Go buy those cheap and free turkeys right now. We will see you guys next time. Check out these Thanksgiving recipes Mike's putting in right now. And we will see you guys next time. Have a good night. Bye.